Oh, hello, hello, hello. So, during my live streaming session that we did yesterday, one of the viewers suggested me that I do a video explaining how I would separate out pieces and how I would prepare pieces of this model to be 3D printed. So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So, if you haven't been tuning into the streams, this is a model that I've done in Rhino. Right, and it's a sub D model, right? So if I hit tab, you can see the unsubdivided version. And I, if I hit tab again, this is the subdivided one, right? Just to show it better in the Arctic view, it looks like that, right? So I've uh, kind of began separating it out like this. By the way, all of this transfers to architectural models, any kind of models. This is just complex geometry. All geometry is the same, right? And this is just something that I'm showing it on. So during the stream, I've already separated out um, a few pieces here. This, these two, sorry, these two, and everything else is still intact. So let me actually isolate this out and show you two methods that I like using. One of them is, by the way, this is for FDM 3D printing but also can be used for SLA printing as well. But I'm, I'm going to be focusing all of this on FDM for, for now. So one of the things, uh, one of the methods is to just say, screw it, uh, we're going to have a bunch of supports, right? And just separating out a piece as it is, and then just kind of placing it on the build plate and letting the Cura or whatever slicing software you want to generate supports for you. Um, and that method is pretty easy. Uh, let's just see. I guess I can separate out this arm right here, right? This area right here. So to do that, on a sub-D model, all you need to do is choose an edge loop that you feel like is most suited to be a seam between the two uh, volumes or two forms. So in my case, let me hit tab. This is the seam that I'm going to be using. And you can see that it's not really clean, right? It, by the way, I select it by control shift and double clicking on the edge, right? It will give you the whole running seam along it. So I can see here that it's not really the best because it kind of goes into the elbow area here and doesn't really connect. I want it to be all connected. So I instead am going to use probably a seam that is right here. Also doesn't work. Hmm. What if we get even closer? That's also bad. Okay, fine. So we don't have a seam that um, immediately gets selected, but that's fine. We can do it manually. So I will be using this one as a start. And I'll just go around the arm just with control shift clicking and oops, that's the wrong one selecting all of the edges here here this edge loop right here right here click that and finish up right here and you can see it's not planner right so it will not be able to just kind of sit on the build plate that easily but that's not of our concern that is fine Right, because I'm showing you the support <laughs> version, uh, so to say. So once you, you get that, you need to um, save this. I, I wonder if it's going to work. We will try. So if you have a selection like this, you can save this selection to later reselect it really easily. And you can do that by typing in named selections. Right, I already have it here. It's uh, this kind of window will pop up, right? And you can just click on the save icon right here and call it, uh, I don't know, um, arm loop. Hit OK. Now we have that selection. If I unselect something by accident and I select other things and I keep working and, oh, I need that uh, arm loop again, I can just simply click on this and it gets reselected. Very, very convenient thing, by the way, <laughs> uh, but not a part of the tutorial, I guess. So now how to separate, Oops. let's not do that. 
instead let's try to somehow come on just go here there we go um so now to how to actually separate this to do that we will use the command called split it only works like nicely uh with the sub d models right this is why this tutorial is for sub d geometry um and i will when once i typed in split it's gonna ask select objects to split okay so that's my arm or my my body right um i hit enter and then uh, it's gonna ask me to select the cutting objects which is going to be the edge loop right so unfortunately if i remember correctly rhino when we are in this edge loops uh, selection if i try to click on the named selections it's not going to work right it's not going to select it so unfortunately we will need to go back in here this time i don't need to use Control shift oops and i'm selecting all the wrong things like that so i need to go all around this again just to select it properly like that perfect and then once i'm done i just hit enter oh one sub d split into two pieces great that means this arm now can be separated right great step one done step two we need to fill in this and we don't just want to fill in this but also we want to create this kind of a bump a nipple if you will uh, that will connect into a reverse nipple in here i don't know how to call these things but uh, I, I guess you you understand what i mean to do that i will Control shift double click on the edge to get the whole open edge loop now it's going to select properly and i'll uh, type in dupe edge duplicate edge right once i've done that there is a curve here now right that is basically a duplicated edge loop from here i will just select this curve and i will holding the shift key with the gumball i will just scale it down to something maybe like this yeah we can go for that something like this right so we have one edge here and we have an edge loop right here so to loft between these we want to loft between these by the way to loft between these i will just double click Control shift double click on the outer edge like that and shift click on the uh, inner loop and type in sub d loft not just a regular loft but a sub d loft because we're still modeling this in sub d hit enter hit enter again and now we have well let me flip it around now we have a surface or a sub d surface in between uh, the two curves neat now we don't need the curve anymore uh, the inner curve so i delete it control Kotler. Control shift i will double click on the inner loop and extrude it but you can see that now my if i just extrude it like that by the way you can extrude things by uh, clicking on the gumball this little ball or, or sphere thingy here on the axis at which you want to extrude if i just extrude it like that it's fine uh, for for this example but usually you want it to go kind of at an angle not just straight up so before we do that i will create i will move the seaplane from being on the world top like a regular flat seaplane i will move it to here to be aligned well with certain points on this inner edge loop so i'll type in seaplane and here in the menu i will choose three point three point with the three points selected, three point C plane selected, I will I will say that okay, my um, how do you call it? My C plane. This is getting very bright. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, my C plane is going to start from here, right? Its x axis is going to anchor to let's say this point, and its y axis is going to anchor to that point. So now, if I zoom out, you can see that my plane has been moved exactly to that position also orientation 
Now we can double click this and now we can see that as I extrude this with a gumball, by the way, make sure that gumball is uh, right click below on the gumball to, uh, and that it's chosen aligned to C plane or it'll, it will not work. Now I can extrude it along the Z direction of the C plane. That's great. And I can also scale down the edge loop by clicking on the Z axis scale icon right here, scale it down to zero which will flatten it out. Move it slightly down like that. Perfect. That's that's that. Okay, so we have successfully um, extruded the, the nipple, right? Now I'm going to, just to make later assembly easier, I'm going to scale down the nipple, holding down the shift key, the top of the nipple, holding the shift key, to have a little bit of a bevel, something like that. Great. And now all we need to do is just select the whole edge loop. And in sub-D tools here in the top, I will choose fill sub-D hole. Like that. Hit enter. Does, does its magic. And that's it, right? We have ourselves a cap. Now, to take this cap, uh, and, and by the way, since we use the same edge loop here to split, the cap can immediately be moved from or copied from here to the corresponding point on the other side of the arm or, or the other part of the arm, like that. So positive, negative, right? Like that. So we have this done, but there is a problem. And the problem is that with 3D printing, usually things are not perfectly, not aligned, but the sizes are not perfect, perfect. There is, you always want to make a little bit of a tolerance gap between the parts, right? And it depends on what kind of printer you use. But for me, um, the, the way I do it is I just select the top edge loop of, of the positive shape. I select the point in the middle and I scale them down holding the shift key. It doesn't matter then what axis you use. I scale them down to um, 0 0.95, 95% of their original size, just slightly boop, scaled down. And also what I do is I move them down along the Z axis of our C plane that we've created just slightly down like that. Now I'm making sure that this is smaller than this, right? This will fit and the glue will do the rest. Um, now we just select everything and type in join. Great. We have one sub D here, one sub D here. If I use subdivided versions, you can see that it gets rounded off and there's a lot of kind of weird things happening here. Don't worry. Like those those weird things will uh, w once you reconnect reconnect it, those weird things will be solved, right? Uh, they will match up nicely because the topology is the same. All right. So now what's what's next? Uh, well, next we need to clean up the C plane because it's still bad. So I'll type in C plane. Uh, I'll go for world top. Now we're back to normal, uh, having a normal C plane. So now we have this, uh, this arm right here. I will copy it, drag it out and I'll select the, 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 the copied version and I'll type in sub D to nerves. No, wait, it, I, I think it's just two nerves. Yes, it is just two nerves and I'll hit enter. And what it does, it basically from, um, just move it away from sub D geometry, it creates nerves, a nerves polysurface, which you can use to Boolean things and so on. Right. So now with the nerves polysurface, um, done, we have two approaches. Right. One approach is to just say, okay, this is going to be our mesh, 
right? And I'm just going to position it uh, the best I can, right? On the build plate and uh, say that everything gets supported by, um, by, by, by uh, supports, <laughs> right? By 3D printer generated supports. Or I can say that, no, 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 I want this to lay flat on bed. So it's, it will need to be split into two pieces. So let's do both methods uh, at once. First, let's do just how I would convert a sub D shape into a mesh that is smoothed, right? Because that's, uh, I, I feel like that's important. If you just select a sub D shape and you type in mesh, um, and let's hit preview, or let's hit OK, rather. And you look at it. That's uh, that looks fine. It's a little bit dense, but that looks okay. But it's not um, it's not the best. Like the topology is not not the best. So just to keep things clean, I will um, create a grasshopper file where I will. So you can create a grasshopper file by typing in grasshopper, and here I will type in sub D like that. Right click on it. Set one sub D, select the arm, and we can actually lock lock the arm in place so that we don't accidentally select it. So now it's referenced in Grasshopper. I will extract or uh, I will get the control polygon uh, of the sub D, sub D control polygon. There we go. Like that. Wait, do I have bifocals? Yes, I do. Don't worry about that, that, that one. Just to show you better what's what's going on. Um, so it gives me the control polygon that we used. And if we use Catmull Clark subdivision on the control polygon with, let's say, level three subdivision, and we bake it out. By the way, you can bake things out quickly with uh, insert. Uh, button on your keyboard we get ourselves a much cleaner much cleaner top typology as uh, opposed to what you would get by just running a mesh command over this right let's go for arctic view that's how it looks quite clean so now this can be directly uh, moved into Cura, can be directly moved into any kind of SLA slicer that you want, and can be can be printed uh, with supports, right? Uh, my suggestion is that try not to generate supports on this area, because you want this area to be as clean as possible for a perfect fit. Okay, so we have, uh, we have this version done. Then what about the NURBS version? What about the version that doesn't generate any supports, any additional supports? Well, for it, let me isolate this. And actually, we don't need a Grasshopper anymore. I will close it. So unlock, get rid of that. So for the NURBS version, we need to split it into two parts, right? And both parts need to be flat so that they can lay flat on the bed and they can be printed. So that's just a simple modeling exercise where we zoom into this. And in the top view, I will just draw a line, probably like, yeah, something like that, right through the middle axis, right? So we get a line, then using the gumball extrude, I will extrude it so that it engulfs the whole shape and I will extrude it once more. Um, but this time I need to extrude it along its um, normal vector. So I can either choose to do align to object for gumball and then extrude it this way or I could just use extrude tool. That would also work. Or offset surface tool. That would also work. But basically what I want to do is half of the shape is located in the model, uh, sorry, half of the shape is located in the box and the other half is sticking out. Um, here I notice that there's probably going to be, there might be a problem with the finger, the finger area. So I'm just 
ever so slightly going to move the box to the right just so that that finger is a part of you know one geometry and now it's dark again <laughs> there we go now i will select my arm okay i will type in boolean split and i will split it with the box enter then i can get rid of the box and move this away like that and back to shield view i have two shapes now just looking at them seems like it's gonna be okay uh, this area will still generate supports because it's you know just gonna be hanging um, but it looks looks fine now how do you orient something flat on the on the ground flat on the build plate um, the way i do it is just using orient 3 pt orient three points selecting the the shape hitting enter and then uh, specifying a plane right just like we did before when we did the construction plane i need three points and those three points can be anywhere uh, as long as they're on the flat edge of of our cut right so let's say here here and here right they need to follow the, the flat edge of the cut one two three and then it asks me to give me give it three target points so here here and here right o automatically just places it on the ground i'm holding the shift key to make sure that i snap to 90 degree angles but um you don't need to honestly so all of this will print without a single support which will cut the production times by by a large margin let's continue with this one two and just make sure that we are snapping to the correct edge one two three <clears throat> one two three Oh, it's upside down if it's upside down that's uh don't, don't worry you can just go back to gumball choose align to c plane and then rotate it 180 180 degrees now they're misaligned but that's fine you can just hit m enter m short for move enter v enter and click on one of the any point on this edge and just snap it now we're kind of locking it to move only vertically in the c plane so we're going to snap it to any point on this edge like that now they're perfectly aligned perfectly flat we can stack them up nicely i said nicely nicely eh. nicely there we go <laughs> and we are done we have two two variations of it you can see here that i also did um the shoes for it here this is how they look like and also for some reason my my shoes are a little bit lower than uh, than these so let me just move vertical m enter v enter from this point to the bottom of the shoes like that so slowly we're kind of populating our build plate with these pieces that will need to be glued together and once they are done uh, we will have our final model uh, to assemble and glue together. Um, the reason why I'm not uh, using uh, this, you know, the uncut version of it. Let me just get rid of the uh, mesh wires. There we go. The reason why I'm not going to be using this is because I'm, I'm printing it with FDM and I hate removing supports. <laughs> so I'm trying to have a model that has the least amount of supports possible even if i will need to be very careful when gluing these two pieces back together so that they align perfectly right i think this is a better trade-off than trying to print it this with a support um i guess last thing that i can show this has been printed in sla and i have been using the Let's have a crap ton of supports version. 
and it seems like it worked out. Uh, it seems like it's it's uh, working out quite nicely. Um, but there are indeed a lot of like divots and so on in the body that I want to reduce for the FDM printing. That's that's why we're doing it um, this way. Oh, by the way, there is going to be all of these uh, shapes. All of these models are going to be available for my Patreons, for my Patreon supporters. So if you want a figurine like this, make sure to check out the Patreon. Also subscribe. Do that now. <laughs> okay, I'll see you around. Bye.